Hey there, thank you for taking the time to stop by and check out my video. Now I suspect you probably saw the title of this video and you're wondering how in the world can I make a claim that noise reduction rating is not the most important factor when choosing a suppressor. Now if you're curious about that, stick around to this video because I think I've got several really good points to make and explain why there are many other factors to consider when choosing a suppressor for a supersonic rifle. Now that said, how can I make that claim? Well, you think about either of these rifles or really any rifle that's shooting a supersonic round. The supersonic crack of that bullet is going to be loud no matter how you cut it. Supersonic is supersonic whether it's out of a pistol, whether it's out of a rifle, doesn't matter. That is a loud noise. Now you think about the 140 decibel rating that is considered hearing safe. My understanding is that is a one-time deal, a one-time impact noise. Beyond that, repeated exposure could damage your hearing. So for me, when I look at any of these new modern suppressors from a quality manufacturer, they're going to do the job. They're going to reduce the sound. What I look for in sound reduction is a suppressor that allows me to wear just electronic ears. It's not going to make me double up with foam plugs and electronic ears. I always double up when I'm shooting unsuppressed rifles, whether it's a Magnum or any of these rifles, I'm going to wear foam plugs and electronic ears. And that's quite annoying, especially if you're at a match or something, you're trying to talk to your buddies, you got all this ear pro on. You think about practical applications, maybe in hunting where you're going to fire one round, okay, you want a really quiet suppressor because that's a one-time deal, one shot at an animal. But say you're shooting a match, say you're shooting out with your buddy, say you're out plinking by yourself, you're always either going to be firing multiple rounds or you're going to be around other people that are firing multiple rounds, many times with unsuppressed rifles or unsuppressed weapons. So to have a suppressor that is the absolute quietest in the market, what value is that to you? For me, it's very low on the list, so long as it meets the requirement of taking the major bite out of that sound and allow me to wear the electronic muffs. Now, that's where I'm coming from. So that said, when I make a suppressor decision, there's many other factors that weigh in my mind. Let's take a look at those other factors and see if I can help you understand what else there is in making a suppressor purchase decision. There are a handful of other factors that I'm looking at before I even consider noise reduction. One of the most important ones, what is the can design and materials? So you think about the application you're going to be using this suppressor. There are suppressors designed for specific applications, so make sure you've matched those up correctly. Are you putting it on a precision bolt gun that you're going to be carrying through the woods? Are you going to be putting it on an SBR with a high rate of fire? Are you going to be putting on a DMR style auto loading uh, semi-auto sniper type system? All those things should play into consideration because you want to make sure the can you're going to purchase is aligned with the application you're going to use it for. And you can find all kinds of information about that online. You can see many of these suppressors being used in jobs, whether it's in combat or matches, wherever. There are tons of examples of these suppressors being used to give you an idea of where they make sense. Now, next up, you've got your locking style. So there's a ton of different mounts on the market and they all have their pros and cons. You think about something like this M110, it's got a gate latch that just lifts up and then it slides off. Very easy to use. Something like the Surefire has the lock collar with a, a latch that you ratchet down to tighten it. Or something like this newer style Knight's can with the ball bearings in there that again ratchet down and lock it onto the mount very solid. They each have their pros and cons. There's direct thread on, there's all kinds, but being aware of the mount that you're going to purchase and where it makes sense and what its pros and cons are are important when you're making a decision. You've got your point of impact shift. This one is important in my mind, not so much because it's a small number, but that it's repeatable. Now you think about maybe like an SBR or a carbine, sure you might want a small number so that you can just run the same zero suppressed and unsuppressed, but on a precision rifle where we can make corrections and dial in the scope and then hold that, so long as your shift is repeatable, you can dial for that in the scope and then hold from there. So Again, I'm not after a small number as much as I am repeatability and point of impact shift when it comes to precision rifles. There's flash reduction. We'll take a look at that later. Really important for night vision performance and especially maybe you're shooting at dusk, night, whatever. Flash reduction is a big part of suppressors. Blast reduction. For me in the West, that is extremely important because I shoot in very dry conditions. There's a ton of dust out here. There's a ton of chaff. If you crank off an unsuppressed round by the ground, it's going to blow all kinds of stuff up in your face, in your teeth, wherever. It's going to block your scope, get in your eyes. Suppressors really help mitigate that. So blast reduction is critical. Recoil reduction, this is another one that you hear many times. 
promoted as a piece of suppressors. And I do agree with that. Recoil reduction is important, but to an extent. Now the final piece, and I think this one will be a lot of fun, but earlier I mentioned they're all gonna be loud. All supersonic rounds are gonna be loud. Many times new suppressor purchasers are disappointed because the can's not as quiet as they'd hoped for. I hope that's not the case. I hope you get to hear the suppressor you're gonna purchase before you buy it because they are loud if they're on a supersonic rifle. Now that said, what does it sound like downrange? That's the question I've always had, and we're gonna explore that in this video. So sure, do a couple of decibel differences make a difference up here? Yeah, they likely do. But if you're wearing electronic ears like I talked about earlier, you're not gonna notice it. It's still gonna be very comfortable for you shooting wise. But my question is, say you're shooting at something downrange, that is aware of your shot, maybe is looking for where it came from, is there gonna be a difference in what it sounds like between different suppressors? So we're gonna explore that. But before we do, I wanna take a closer look at the gear and then we'll get into the shooting portion of this. So what do we have out here for gear today? Well, I purposely brought two very different packages for us to play with. So here you've got the Barrett MRAD in 6.5 Creedmoor. It's running the Surefire. 762 SOCOM Mini Suppressor. And then here you've got the Knight's Armament Mark 11 Mod 1 running the M110 suppressor. So we've got two different calibers out here. We've got two drastically different size suppressors out here. We've got two different actions out here. So I think it'll be really fun to compare these two drastically different packages in kind of the same test that we're going to run and see how they perform. What do they sound like downrange from a downrange perspective? What do they do for 100 yard point of impact shift and repeatability? How do they handle the blast? What are they gonna do for recoil management? I think I got some really cool stuff in the works for you, so stick around and let's move into it. From here, I think we'll move down to 100 yards and we'll take a look at our 100 yard zero shift before we start doing anything else out at distance. So before we get into the super fun, long range stuff, we need to spend a little bit of time at 100 yards and give you a look at what these rifles do for point of impact shift when I remove and reinstall the suppressor. So you can see behind me, I got a piece of paper at 100 yards. There's one dot on that paper. What I'm gonna do is start with both rifles, suppressors installed with the zeros they already have, put three rounds, remove the suppressors, don't touch the scopes, shoot three rounds, measure that distance, reinstall the suppressors, don't touch the scopes, and see if they return back to their initial zero. So point of impact shift is something that's very important on suppressors. Let's fire it up at 100 yards. Let's go ahead and start with the MRAD. Three rounds suppressed on the dot at 100 yards. Okay, three rounds, zero. Now we'll put three unsuppressed. I haven't touched the turrets, so we'll see what the shift is. All right, let's put the can back on. Okay, here's three more with the suppressor reinstalled. All right, so let's see what we did there. Okay, so unfortunately, the GoPro that I had set up to watch the target is no longer working, so I have to talk you through what happened here at 100 yards. So the first three rounds I fired were these three right here, the blue dot, and there's two. I then removed the suppressor and fired these three rounds, so you can see my point of impact shifted up and to the left. I then reinstalled the suppressor and fired these three rounds. So what I see for shift, when I go unsuppressed is 0.5 elevation, 0.1 windage. So when I remove the can later, what I'm gonna dial into my scope is down 0.5, right 0.1. And that should get my point of impact where I want it for long range shooting. As far as zero shift on the Surefire, that's what it is. Now we'll stretch it out on steel. So let's check out 100 yard point of impact shift with the Mark 11 and the M110 can. So up first, three rounds on our dotted 100.
Okay, let's pull the can and check that. Rifle safe. So that can turned out to be pretty tough to get off. So I apologize for cutting the video. All I did was remove the can, have not touched the scope. Now let's fire three rounds unsuppressed with the same dot. Mosquito oak. Pretty sure those flew off the paper. Now let's reinstall the can and see what we get for a zero shift. Magazine out, charging handle back, rifle on safe. Okay, gate latch latched. Okay, three rounds, depressed. Wow, <laughs> wait till you see these. So I came down to the 100 yard target I just shot with the Mark 11, and you can see the rounds are all over. So my first three rounds went into this area. I remember this was my first, my second, and I believe this was the third here, suppressed. Then I removed the suppressor and fired these three rounds unsuppressed which I measured at 0.8 elevation, 0.1, excuse me, one mil left. So pretty significant shift. Then I put the suppressor back on and fired three more rounds. And at this point I'm missing a round. I don't know if it missed the target completely, but then I had this one and then I believe this one. So quite the point of impact shift. Not exactly sure what to make of that, but definitely 0.8 elevation one mil left. Because my point of impact shift was so goofy with this rifle, I decided to draw another dot down there. I'm gonna fire five rounds at that dot to see if the group settles down and the zero settles back down to where it should be after reinstalling the can. So let's take a look at that. All right, let's go take a look. So I just fired five additional rounds out of the Mark 11 at the upper dot at 100 yards just to confirm the suppressor was seated back where it should be. Pretty interesting results. I had trouble finding the first round after I fired it. And when I walk up here, it's because I've determined it went right into the group from earlier. So there were just two rounds right here. Now there's a third. So that was my first round of the five. And then the additional four rounds went into that group, which you can see aligns with the zero that I had earlier. So. It appears the suppressor settled back in, but I have no clue what was up with that. Right. So I drew a third dot down here and put five more rounds on the target after reinstalling the can to see if it settled down. Prior to doing that, I clicked my scope right two tenths to try to bring those groups to center. I also double checked my parallax to make sure it was good. And you can see again, the first round I fired flew way left and then the group stacked over where it should be. So not sure what's up with that, but for today, I'm gonna to roll with it. I'm gonna call this my zero, and that's what we'll shoot on steel for the purpose of making this video about suppressors, but uh, definitely gonna explore that further. So we talk about signature reduction when it comes to suppressors. What does that really mean? Well, in this part of the video, I'm gonna show you what that actually looks like and what that sounds like from a downrange perspective. So what I've got are both my rifles out here, and we're gonna shoot them suppressed, and then we're gonna shoot them unsuppressed. Now for targets downrange, I've got a two-third Zipsic out there at 616 yards, and then I've got a full-size Zipsic at 1116 yards. Now in between that, at about 650 yards, I've got an iPhone set up looking through my SIG 10X rangefinders. They're gonna be looking back at the shooter. So in this demonstration, what I wanna show you is when you're suppressed, what does it sound like from a downrange perspective when you're shooting a target that's basically right there at you and when rounds would be going potentially over your head or by you. And then also, say you're looking back toward the shooter, what are you gonna be seeing in terms of dust reduction? So you can see on the ground right here, it is extremely dry out. There's a lot of chaff and everything on the ground. So what I want you to see is when you're suppressed, the difference it's gonna make is pretty huge. So join me as we put some rounds through each of these rifles suppressed and then unsuppressed. So let's start off by putting some suppressed rounds through the Mark 11. I'm gonna to try to make hits, but we'll see if we connect. If I start connecting on a lot, 
I'll purposely move off so you can hear the difference. Okay. Those are just off the right edge. Off the right edge. Okay, let's move out to the full size. 11.16. The left edge. Impact. Impact. That's all I got out of the Mark 11. So now let's pop the suppressor off the Mark 11. Make sure it's on safe, which it is. Bolt is back, chamber's clear, so we're good to go. So to remove this one, all you do is raise this gate latch, and then you should be able to twist the suppressor off, just like that. And now we've got an unsuppressed Mark 11. Put some rounds downrange with it and see the difference in blast and sound. I've dialed on my unsuppressed correction, so I should be able to hold the same dope that I was earlier, which is 4.7 mils with this rifle at 616 and I'm going to favor left. The wind has died down it seems. I'm going to favor left one mil. Right edge. Right edge. Now We'll go to 11.16. Off the right edge. So I didn't connect with the 11.16 with this rifle, but you should have got a good feel for the sound shooting the closer target and then shooting over the camera. So now let's do the same thing with the MRAD. Impact. Put two in the dirt. All right, let's move to 1116. That's going to be nine mil. Right edge. Off the right edge. Off the right edge. So that should give you a taste of what the suppressor sounds like downrange. So now let's try the same thing unsuppressed. So first thing we're going to do is make sure the rifle is good and clear. It definitely is. Now we'll go ahead and remove this Surefire SOCOM suppressor. So, loosen my lock collar here and slide this thing off. And now we should be good to go, unsuppressed on the MRAD. Okay, let's give the MRAD a go, unsuppressed. Again, I've dialed on my unsuppressed correction. The right edge. Now let's go to 11.16. So again, we're shooting over the camera. Off the right edge.
So that'll give you a feel for suppressed and unsuppressed. So next up, how about a little bit of slow-mo work? We always hear suppressors and recoil management, so I felt like a slow-mo video was the best way to show that. So what we're going to do in this one, I'm going to be shooting the two-thirds Ipsic at 616. Again, not too concerned about hits. But what I want to do is set up a couple of slow-mo angles and show you what the recoil impulse looks like out of both rifles, unsuppressed and then suppressed. And again, the other thing you're going to see is the dust. Again, we're in a very dry environment right here. so. These things are huge and knocking down the blast, and you'll see that really well, I think, in the slow-mo. So, check it out. So with the mag out, rifle on safe, and the bolt back, let's reinstall the suppressor, which is simple. You just slide it over, slide it down till it locks, and then close the gate latch. Now we're reinstalled. You can see this thing's got quite a bit of carbon in it, so it locks up really tight. Now let's reinstall the Surefire SOCOM on the MRAD. It's super simple. You put the logo up, maybe twist it till it snaps in right there, and then you just tighten the collar down till it's tight. And it should be pretty locked up. Now let's try three rounds suppressed. So another important job for a suppressor is flash suppression. Now you think about firing your rifle at dusk or at night, the flash coming out into that barrel, that is a key indicator of where you're at. Or if you're using night vision or you're with folks that are using night vision, that flash, depending on the night vision, could actually wide it out for a split second, making it difficult for you to spot the trace of your bullet if you're using something like a clip-on or spot the splash of an impact or a miss. My goal was to do a little bit of nighttime shooting for you and show you unsuppressed versus suppressed with each of these rifles, what happens. But with the smoke in the air and everything, it just hasn't worked out, so I don't have any good footage there. But what I will do is roll some previous footage of the Mark 11 when it's being fired at night. Now you'll see just a couple of rounds here getting shot, but there's still a fair amount of flash that comes out of the end of that suppressor. If we look back 
to my older video where I was firing the SR25 with the newer CRS suppressor. Again, a little jet of flame still coming out of that suppressor. I've got a picture of the MRAD right here being shot at night, and you can see a fairly large amount of flame coming out of the end of that suppressor. Now that's under night vision. When you're looking at that through just the naked eye or through something like an iPhone, it is just a little pencil type flame. But the night vision takes that image and just blows it up into a huge indicator of where you're at. Flash suppression is a very important job of a suppressor. And just being aware of that when you're shopping, there definitely are suppressors that do a better job at suppressing it than others. So before we wrap up, I want to take just a couple of minutes here and summarize what I experienced putting this video together and what I'm taking away from this. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I did getting to put it together. I can't wait to see what happens in the comments. I already know these are probably going to blow up because I'm crazy saying noise reduction isn't that important. And I'd love to hear your reasoning as to why. Is there something I missed putting this together? Is there something else you're looking at that maybe I'm not even considering? I'd love to hear it. I love engaging in the comments and chatting with you. So light it up. I can't wait. Now that said, remember I went into this saying that noise reduction isn't that important to me. And I still stand by that. From a shooter's perspective, Suppressors are great because they allow me to wear only electronic ears and not have to double up with plugs and muffs. So that's a win. Both of these do that for me. From there, I was curious, what do these sound like from a downrange perspective? And this is where it got interesting for me. I expected both of these to sound pretty much the same downrange, but I don't know about you, in that footage I noticed this Surefire SOCOM on this MRAD was actually louder from a gunshot perspective than the Mark 11 was. So the unsuppressed rifle, you heard a crack and then a distinct thud, maybe a second or two later. The Mark 11 with the can, you hear the crack, and I didn't hear any thud from a gunshot. So in my opinion, this was very quiet from a downrange perspective. This mini SOCOM, I felt like you still hear the crack and a faint thud of the gunshot. So the gunshot to me was definitely quieter, but it was still present and not as quiet is the M110 can. So that actually surprised me. I fully went into this expecting both of these to sound the same from 650 yards downrange. From there, the other thing I was surprised by was flash suppression. This is something I noticed in the video that I was not expecting. Daylight shooting from 650 yards away, you can see muzzle flash on several occasions out of this MRAD with the Mini SOCOM. You don't see it at all out of the Mark 11. So Definitely, probably suppressor size plays into that, the volume and what's being expelled out the front. But then you took a look at the night footage or the night pictures that I showed you there, and again, you saw a much bigger fireball coming out of this SOCOM suppressor than you did out of the Mark 11. So, in my opinion, something like this Mark 11, which is much larger in size, is doing much better with flash suppression than the SOCOM. The next one, this is one that I think is huge for me out here in the west with the dry conditions is the blast reduction and what that does to the environment around you. You saw when I cranked off a couple of those unsuppressed rounds, it was dust and everything going all over my face. Well, suppressors, both of them totally mitigated that. So from a shooter's perspective, I really enjoyed the fact that I could shoot and not have dust and chaff blow in my face, blow in front of my scope, making it hard to see the target downrange. So that was a win out of both of these suppressors. The next one that has me scratching my head is the point of impact shift. I'm very impressed with the Surefire SOCOM. This thing behaved exactly as I believe it should. Suppressed, I was zeroed, removed it, minimal shift, put the cam back on, and boom, it went pretty much right back to where it should. So that was awesome performance. The M110 suppressor on the Mark 11, I got to do some more follow-up on this one. That's actually the first time I've done that test on this rifle, so I had no clue what to expect out of it. But I will say the shift was larger than I expected. And the fact that it didn't immediately return back to the zero has me questioning what's up there. So I got to spend some more time with this rifle, get more experience and figure out, is that normal? Maybe some of you in the comments have experience with the M110 cans and you can let me know. Is this in line with what you're seeing? Because I'm not sure. I'll spend more time and I'll get it figured out. But right now I'm definitely scratching my head. You saw downrange performance. It really didn't impact my ability to make hits. I dialed in that correction from the 100 yard shift and then held as I normally would. but I'm more curious as I move forward, is that repeatable long term? Recoil reduction, this is an interesting one. On something like the MRAD with a brake, I really didn't notice a difference in recoil. Maybe a little bit difference in the feel, but it wasn't substantial. Where I did notice a recoil difference was on the M110 can and the Mark 11. I felt like this M110 suppressor really did tame recoil on this rifle versus unsuppressed 
with just a flash hider. So definitely something to be said for recoil reduction. As far as blowback, back pressure in the system, not something I notice at all with this. I assume that's because of the huge internal volume. But at the end of the day, in summary, I still stand by my comment. To me, noise reduction at the shooter is not that important. I would much rather have a suppressor that's repeatable in point of impact shift, reduces the blast, reduces the flash when I'm shooting with night vision, etc. All the things that I named. So that said, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around. I love the growth this channel's been getting. We've been getting a ton of attention. And it's your engagement that allows me to do that. So if you enjoyed this video, help me out with a comment, a like, a subscribe. I've got a ton more in the works. As soon as the smoke clears, I've got some really cool videos that I want to put together. And I want you to join me when I do that. So hit me with some of that engagement here on YouTube. But also, don't forget on Instagram. I've got the Instagram page at Mountains Mullets America. It's a great place for us to interact through private messages or give you a sneak peek at what I've got coming up in the future. So check me out, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. A ton of growth here in the channel and a ton of really cool content planned. So join me in my next video. Thank you.